today I want to talk about what I wish I knew before applying to medical school. I think the immediate reaction or thought, at least when I see those titles, and I think probably a majority of other people or else it wouldn't be be being used so much is that there's an underlying tone that if I had known, I would never have done this. And I can't speak for anybody else. Maybe, maybe that is true. Just based on what I've seen in the attitudes of doctors and even some residents and medical students. That is what is so beautiful about self-awareness. The ability to look at yourself honestly, objectively. Not always. You're going to feel emotions that other people on the surface are going to be like, I would never feel or respond the way that you are. And that's something that's just personal and private to yourself. You can't help it. But I believe it is really important to objectively have moments to look at yourself. And I can't speak on it for everyone, but I believe that if we did it more frequently, it may help us to ask questions such as what I wish I knew before I got into this less and may have those thoughts of doubt less. And there's a component of honesty about that. And I think it can be hard to do that with ourselves and with other people, truly. But it is so necessary to our lives and the trajectory of them in a very roundabout way. What I'm just trying to say is I, everything that I say, I would, I would not change. I would still do medicine. And the reason I am able to say that now confidently is because I took many moments, sometimes months, to really understand if it's truly something that I wanted and let myself look at other possibilities honestly and I let myself let go of medicine and my place in it before applying, before getting in, that has really helped those doubts in my head about if this is something I want to do. And they will tell you when you get in, it is a reoccurring thought. Um, students become depressed and anxious and there's a constant doubt if this was the right choice, but I had moments, of course. I had a lot of anxiety, but in the past two and a half years, which I know is not much compared to some, but it feels like a long time. I have never honestly regretted this at all. However, um, I just wanted to make this video because maybe you haven't been honest with yourself completely or maybe you need to take that moment to step back and evaluate your life and what you want to do more honestly. I think we're creatures of habit and we don't like change and we can build up the idea of a career such as medicine and 
we can go down a path without thinking and reminding ourselves of why. And it's so important to do so because everyone is afraid that there's this, there's this train of thought where if you let yourself drift away from it, or if you let yourself think that you could do something else or be something else, then you'll never achieve your goal. And I think we really need to get away away from that because there's nothing more powerful than allowing yourself to let go of your dream. The clarity of thought that comes from stepping away allows you to understand so much better why you're doing it and give it a truer, more meaningful, more real understanding of the decisions that you make. And you absolutely should want that. We all should because it is a big decision. Choosing a career is a big decision. It's what you will do for the majority of your time here on this life, in this life. And so I think we should never be scared to let ourselves let go. But I understand it is difficult. You will always have this feeling in the back of your head that you are not enough, whether that is you are not studying enough, you are not good enough. There is always a comparison going on. And I blame the environment that we have created around medicine for that. It seems, and this is not by any means everybody, there's been a lot of good doctors that I've rotated with, but there seems to be this cycle where medical students, because they get put down, because they're stressed, and because they constantly feel inadequate by themselves, by their professors, by their attendings, what have you, that they carry that with them into their career and they make everybody else around them suffer the same way that they did. And that goes back to the, the being honest with yourself. It, it's so important to be honest with your feelings and take a step back from situations instead of letting it sit inside you because there gets a point where you reach a threshold of being told you're not enough so many times that it dulls your senses. And to be able to cope with it, you start projecting it um, and forming these unhealthy behaviors. So that being said, the other day I was taking a patient, I'm on my psych rotation, I was taking a patient to their family medicine clinic. That's part of their program. They, they transport, they do a community health kind of approach where they take homeless people and get them involved with housing, food stamps, um, get them connected to therapists, psychiatrists, and also take them to their doctor appointments. And so we dropped her off at her family med doctor. And he doesn't know me, obviously, um, besides that I'm a medical student. And I was dressed in jeans, obviously not professional, because on Mondays we don't, we don't need to. And he just says, are you taking the day off? There's this attitude not always, but overall, that you must always be doing something. There's always an attitude of you have to fill every moment of your time with studying. If you aren't, you're not trying enough. You have to have 
the absolute best board scorer in the world, even though not every specialty calls for an amazing board scorer. Not every hospital needs an amazing board scorer. Um, and a comparison happens between yourself and your friends. And it's just so, it's so not necessary because it doesn't stimulate productivity, which is the only reason why I could think that somebody teaches that way. And it happens so much. Um, the, the putting down or the being the bad cop or the tough teacher to get you to rise to your full potential has not shown to be a productive way of doing things. And so it's just amazing to me how much it happens still as a teaching method. So to me, it communicates that it, it is not a method all of the time, but is more so a sign of an insecurity or a void that has not been dealt with in that person. Um, and maybe even a doubt of why they chose to do this career that they have to constantly have project onto other people to be insecure as well. And that's just one example, a very small one, but it just got me thinking. Um, so, all of this to say, in pre-med, I did feel insecure. I had so many moments where I felt inadequate. But you always think, once you attain the next goal in your life, that magically everything is gonna go away. You're not gonna have those feelings anymore. Um, and I think that is why we see so many discontent doctors because we say, well, once we get into medical school, then I will be enough. I've made it, I've achieved, I've gotten in. And that's what I heard a lot of people say. And I told myself that a long time. It just sets off another round of feeling inadequate because then it's what board score are you going to get? Um, worrying if you're, you have a, a good enough score. And then it's worrying about if you're good enough in your rotations compared to the other students. And then it's, are you good enough to get into a residency program? Are you good enough to get a job? Are you a good enough doctor? It's an endless, endless, endless cycle. And it does not go away without effort. It doesn't, it, it will not stop unless you take a step back and decide that it will. And I think every day there has to be a conscious effort to have an identity that doesn't waver based on situations and people. And that is a lot of work, but I don't think we spend near enough time working on it, possibly because we're supposed to be studying every second of the day. We're, we can go searching for purpose and acceptance and fulfillment our whole lives our whole entire lives, if you let us, we will search to the end until you step back from the cycle. You honestly assess who you are and know that there's absolutely nothing in this life that will give you the purpose that you're seeking. There is no job, no award, nothing. And what a horrible life to spend it on hoping that somebody gives you an affirmation. And it's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard to do because we're, we're living in a world where everybody is seeking it. And it's hard not to fall victim to the same mentality that everybody else is doing. But I just, if you aren't already, I just encourage you to break the cycle. Yeah, hope that was helpful. Have a good day, rest of your day, and 
put into practice now the behaviors that you want to have for your future because there's no better time than the present as some wise person once said. <laughs>